everyone. This is a retake of a rookie tutorial about mortars. I already I already filmed this once. Fortunately, my sound was off. So I am redoing the sound here. Um, so if anything funky looks like it's going on, it really is. That's because I am trying to redo the whole video without actually, I, I'm, I'm doing it from a video. So anyways, here we go. I'm going to talk about mortars in bold action. And the um, I'm going to start with uh, the disclaimers. Now, I do play mortars, not in all my lists, but in many lists. Um, and I typically play them in one of the styles that I'm going to talk about, although I have played several of them. Um, I see mortars being played more and more in tournament uh, bold action, and they are definitely also uh, are a fixture of historical bold action as well. Um, it is my understanding that mortars was actually the number one cause of casualties in World War II. So, um, so they are really, really important. Um, and they are also really, really important for, for your play style, uh, depending on your play style in tournament build action. They are a really good tool to use. And I'll get back to why that is. All of what I'm going to say is, of course, going to be tournament related. It's going to be competitive bold action, as always, you know it, right? So, so, so that is is going to be our focus today. There are like two rough categories of mortars. One is the light mortars that we can see in light mortar teams, small man teams, um, but we also see them embedded in certain types of units, um, like rifle grenades, BB launchers, or the knee mortars of the uh, the uh, Japanese. And then there's the, the heavier types, the, um, the medium and the heavy mortar, which I sort of lumped together because they're doing a very similar job. The heavy one is, of course, hitting harder than the medium one, but they are very similar in many respects. And in this category, I lumped the medium mortars, uh, 35 points inexperience, 50 points regular, 10 plus points if you want a spotter, and the heavy mortars. Um, but I also lump stuff like the spig and mortar, and there are other types of weird, um, like um, medium to heavy mortars in this category. Um, they're a little bit less mobile than the light mortars, because the light mortars can actually move and shoot. The, the heavy mortars can't. Uh, the heavy and medium mortars can't. So so you have to stand in one place. You have to give them a fire order in order for them to shoot. You can't do an advance. So in that respect, they are a little different. They're more fixed. Both types are, of course, extremely vulnerable to snipers. Um, so those are the types. And I'm going to talk about them separately in two different slides here. So the first one is going to be, where is it? Uh, there we go. Um, it's going to be the medium and heavy builds. Competitively, I see two ways of bringing a medium or a heavy mortar. Either you bring one regular with a spotter, or you bring one inexperienced without the spotter. Um, so, so, and there's a different focus here. Uh, what you're getting is you're getting one unit that can zero in and deliver quite a lot of pins and quite a lot of damage when it's zeroed in. Um, so the regular one, you take that if you want it to be a little bit more survivable, um, because with the regular one, you can stay in total line of sight blocking cover out of line of sight of that sniper. However, what you have to do then is you have to place a spotter outside in the open somewhere where it can be hurt. Typically, it won't be because it's not a unit, so people won't try to kill it, but a sniper might take it out in, in one shot, forcing your spot, uh, your mortar to move out. Um, the inexperienced one is a cheaper version, like I said before, like a medium inexperienced uh, mortar that costs 35 points. Uh, so you're saving quite a lot of points, almost half the points of a regular one with a spotter. Um, so it's very much cheaper, but you'll get to use it less frequently and it will be a little more vulnerable. Um, both of them hit equally hard, which is the main point. And, but none of them have that minus one to hit because they're, they're just mortars. They're zeroing in. They're not going to be shooting directly. So in that respect, they're very, very similar. Um, 
in in what they can do and 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 how I see them deployed on the battlefield. So next slide. Here we go. Now the targets for the medium and heavy mortars. Um, very very good targets for medium heavy mortars are fixed enemy units. Units that sort of are fixed in place that are not going to move for some reason. It could be because they're on an objective. It could be because they're in a house in a building. Um, it could be because they've already gone, as I've written here. Um, so, so some units are typically very, very stationary, and uh, it's even better if they're slow because then they can't move outside of the range of your zeroing in, even if they move. Um, so, so in that respect, I mean that is a perfect unit. Um, fixed artillery pieces come under this category. So, how is this? Um, sitting in area terrain even more so because then they're really fixed um snipers actually are also a quite a good target which is kind of weird isn't it because mortar's main enemy is the sniper um but the sniper only has 36 inches of range a mortar typically has more than that so what you can do is once the sniper is deployed if you can get your mortar to come on like out of range and then see the sniper, you can start zeroing in. That sniper will typically not move because it's really really dangerous for snipers to move about. But if he stands still and you're zeroing in, at some point you'll kill him. Immobilized vehicles are also perfect targets for uh, medium and heavy uh, howitzers, especially if they're tanks. A tank that's been immobilized, just start hitting it with your mortar because it won't move and it will get pinned. And a tank that's pinned will not do a thing. So even though it's a, uh, like an armored pillbox, it will not do a thing once you start hitting it with that mortar. So those are good targets. What about the tactics? If I can find the slide here, just a sec. Wow, I have a lot to say about this one. Yeah, medium and heavy tactics. There we go. Sorry about this. I'm like literally um, going back and forth in my video to find because um, <laughs> the whole PowerPoint got erased, so I can't do the PowerPoint again. Right, medium and heavy tactics. Uh, the two turn zeroing is a really important one. That is when um, a target has already gone, they've moved up or whatever, and there are order dice or already on it. Then you shoot. That's a six plus. Next turn, what you're hoping for is to get the dice first so that you can shoot again before the target moves. That's the two turn zeroing. So you get one chance on a uh, one in six and then one chance on one in three. Um, that should that should give you fairly good odds of hitting. Um, and And what it also does is it forces the enemy units to move out early which is also good for you um, because maybe you'll have other assets, a steward that can move up and, and just host them down with its machine guns, right? Um, so the two turns here rowing, I see that's this done again and again and again with medium mortars, heavy mortars, and also actually with light mortars, which can actually go out and find a target. Medium mortars and heavy mortars are actually going to have to sit and wait for something that's in their line of sight to have moved. Um, but, but light mortars can, can actually actively go out and find that target. Um, there's also the peaking from cover, two to one in cover. Um, so medium mortars have three man crew, heavy mortars have four man crew. And what you need to do is you need to make sure that more than 50% of your crew is in cover. So for a medium mortar, it's two of your guys. One of them got, can peek out, and that's called peeking out, where you sit, you, you place one model, like there's a house, right? You place one model looking out of that house, the rest of them are behind the house. Now you're suddenly in hard cover. You can still shoot, because you can see with that one model. And because the mortar is not actively a part of the unit, it's not a model as such, it's just a counter, you don't have to be within a certain amount of distance from that mortar. So you can actually conquer line your, your guys 
to take you to make use of the cover in the optimized fashion, and you should. Peeking out, it's good for you. Um, line of sight block spotting. That's uh, when you have a medium motor or a heavy motor with a spotter, and you place your your medium uh, or heavy motor completely in line of sight block. You can't see a thing of the enemy. The enemy can't see it, um, and you're only using your spotter to shoot. That happens typically if the enemy doesn't have a sniper, or if you're really afraid of uh, of that one sniper that it does have, um, and you're just you, you want to stay incomplete, you want to stay safe. Um, with that, you, you can't, for instance, you're playing kill points or whatever, you, you can't afford to lose the, the, uh, the mortar. So you place it behind the line, side blocking piece of terrain, completely behind, not peeking out. Um, you can actually also use your mortars as backline holders. Um, they're not great at this because they have no like, direct shooting, but what you can do is especially in the center of your board, if you're taking the central position, you, you can deploy your mortar uh, close to objectives or close to zones where you're scoring. And then um, you can actively hold that down, that objective. Um, and and you can also, if, if you're right next to, like if you're playing sectors, uh, you can do the run for advantage, so you place it right next to a neutral zone, and you run in the last turn. You run in and and take uh, the points in the neutral zone. So that's running for advantage. Backline holding, running for advantage. Backline holding is when you sit on a sit on an objective. Run for advantage is when you run into the uh, the neutral zone. Um, both of them can be done with mortars and should be done with mortars. Your mortars are not just artillery pieces. They are also point scoring and you should always remember that they have to be. Um, so what about the light ones? The light builds I'm, I'm seeing mostly inexperienced small teams. Um, you can sometimes see regular or veteran small teams if people want them to be a little bit more survivable. But... Um, if you're taking a light build, it will typically be because you want to save the points. As such, you might as well just take the inexperienced dudes. They're still a small team. They can still go down. Most of the time, you'll only be hit on sevens anyway. And if you're shooting, you will not suffer any uh, ill effects for being inexperienced. So, well, why not? Um, you'll also see light builds where you have uh, mortars embedded in skirmish infantry especially. Not in assault infantry, not in push infantry, because you're not standing still long enough. But in skirmish infantry, you sometimes can see the, the units all in dedicated grenadier units, like multiple embedded mortars in infantry. So the, the Japanese grenadier units with the knee mortars, for instance, you can see that happening as well, which can be a really good build, by the way, um, although expensive, of course. So what are the tactics that you can do here um real well you th they're less good at rooting out infantry like medium and heavy mortars really good at rooting out fixed infantry units fixed targets just taking them out of the cover they're sitting in veterans in on an objective in cover normally you can't get them out but medium heavy mortars can do that lights not so much they can take targets of opportunity, and they are really good at going after units that have already gone. One thing I should have noted here is they're also kind of good because they, they can deliver extra pins. Um, so, and I'm going to talk more about this in, in the tactics for the light ones, but because they, they give you D2 pins. Um, so some units that are pin vulnerable uh, can actually be good targets for light mortars. And that is when we move into the tactics. The tactics are way more limited, and that is why I'm mostly, right now, most competitive players are moving into the inexperienced medium mortar. Cheap, gives you the tools, um, but and it has the range of tactics. The, the light ones are less, right? And there's the turn two zeroing, again. First you shoot on a six, then you shoot on a five. Um, so that happens again, and and you can also do advance and shoot, which is really beneficial. That's an sort of an enhanced turn two zeroing, right? Because you advance up where you weren't in any threat, 
you weren't in, in any danger, you move up and you can see that target that's already gone. Um, but, and look at the picture here of the knee mortar, right? But if you have the Japanese one, you can actually uh, have three light mortars in one unit. And if they are, they can either split fire, shooting at each different units, or they can all shoot at the same unit, the same one unit that you want to ab be absolutely certain that you'll hit and give pins. So, uh, for instance, I, in one game against uh, a friend of mine, Mark, who's been featured on this channel before, he had brought his knee mortars, he often does, and I had a, a large unit of SAS, and he shot his grenadiers at that SAS. And unfortunately, I had to go down. So, and he didn't hit the first time, but he's got three chances rolling that six, and then he gets the first order by his next turn, and he hits with two of his mortars. The third one hits on the third turn, but by then I have no way of getting out. I have no way of getting out. I'm getting so many pins each turn, and if I don't go down, I'll at least get two hits. It's, it's just, it's a bad situation. I lost that whole SAS unit. So, it, with embedded um, light mortars, you can actually uh, like shoot several of them and be very sure of hitting something that can be pin vulnerable. Um, because if the enemy has some sort of like, if they have Bansai, you're not going to stop them by, by giving them that one pin. They're not going to stop, they're just going to Bansai away, right? But if they're pin vulnerable, yeah, that's, that's a bad situation and you're very, very likely to actually stop him at that point. Right. So why do you bring a mortar? Um, for me, they're cheaper than the howitzers and do more than half the job that a howitzer does. Right. A howitzer can zero in and it can shoot directly. Shooting directly is not always massively beneficial with a howitzer, although it can be. Um, but most of the time, the enemy would just stay away from that howitzer anyway, which of course is a benefit. Um, but if you're just going to bring something that can root out infantry that's that's fixed or sitting on objectives, the mortar does so for way less cost. Um, so in that respect, it's really good. It's also very toolboxy, so that you have like that that one HE shot that you can fire off, um, where some armies doesn't have that much HE, but but you you want that. So in a good toolbox army, you'll want that capability of HE. Um, I'll just skip one and go back to this gamey one. But you'll also see leaf blower lists where you have like you have your artillery slot, you have your mortar slot, and then you have your tank slot. All of those can be filled with something that can zero in, right? So in the dual platoon, you can actually have six different HEs, which is the leaf blower build um, that maybe Bulgarians, uh, Romanians, French are really good at, at that leaf blower build, but other nations can do it as well. Um, so, so leaf blowers can be really powerful. It's a really powerful build, especially if you have open tables. Um, if you have closed tables, it, it struggles, but on open tables, it, it can be really, really powerful. Um, and, uh, HE, uh, because it's indirect, it ignores cover. It, it ignores basically down as well, because yeah, you take half as many hits, but you're still being hit, you're still getting the pins. So um, when you're zeroing in on a target that, that, that won't move because they're fixed, because they have to stay there, because there's an objective, they're in a bad situation. They're in a really bad situation because yeah, you can, you can minimize how many casualties you take, but you are going to take the pins. You are going to take casualties. And if you stay in that, that uh, spot, you are going to get hit. So it's a really bad situation and cover won't help you. Um, so in that respect, it's a really useful tool to have. Now, there's a really gamey one that you can do with inexperienced medium and heavy mortars. There are some nations where the inexperienced mortar can take a spot off. You can't use it, but you can buy it. Now, why would you? I've actually seen some of the best list builders and competitive players do so anyway. Which seems weird because you're buying the inexperienced mortar for the cheaper points and then you're paying 10 points for something that you're not, you can't use. Makes no sense, right? But 
that spotter can still be deployed so you can win the forward deployment game if you have to like you roll off right you have to forward deploy first because you win the roll off so you put out your spotter now the enemy has to place his more his uh, sniper Ooh. then you place your sniper outside of line of sight of his sniper because you don't want the sniper deal whatever right you can see how that can benefit you and <laughs> the spotter is still a model so i've seen this done um at a tournament and this was against a good player so it wasn't against the noob who didn't know what was going on but there was this road going down and someone hadn't blocked the road the to hadn't blocked the road <coughs> so the, the road was dangerous right because the enemy could could really drive down it so this guy he had he had brought that spotter for an inexperienced mortar he placed it on the road in the center of the board on the road now the enemy couldn't run his trucks down that road because you can't drive through enemy units right so he had actually blocked off the road for enemy uh, vehicles and, and that was gamey as fuck but it was how it's played so uh, sometimes having that spotter that you can place in forward deployment can be beneficial and you can I, I have seen it used um, to great effect so yeah that that is basically uh, that is mortars in bold action have I missed anything write so in the comments um, and I hope you could live with me having to, to redo this on a video instead of on the the actual PowerPoint but I hope you got something from it mortars can be really good for you um, so um, yeah I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.